when you're trying to work out which the best type of fundraising is to choose for your project, you want to look at the pros and the cons. So here I've made a table which shows some of the pros and cons of organising events as a way of fundraising. So on the pros, these are often fun to organise. You can get people involved in your project and people uh, like taking part in this way. They're good for raising up to about £1,000. So if your project, uh, like budget, is under £1,000, events might be a really good way for you to raise those funds. It can also be quite quick in terms of the turnaround. So you can have the idea for the event, you can book the venue, you can get people in, and then the money, once the event is over, the money is there for you to use. It's a great way also of turning your time, your spare time, into money. In terms of the cons, it can often take quite a while to organise an event and you need other people to work with. It's very difficult to do this on your own and you also need people to turn up, so to come along to the event and buy the tickets um, or pay those donations on the door. You'll need to do a bit of advertising and promotion of the event to make sure that it's not just you and your group of friends who are there. It needs to be wider than that. You'll need to secure a venue also and look at things like licensing. So uh, can you serve alcohol? Is that important? Are there different uh, things to do with your venue that you can and can't do there? There can also be some risk involved in this, so you're never sure whether it's going to pay off. You might have to put some money up front as a deposit, and you'll have to put a lot of your time and energy into this activity. So think about what happens if it doesn't pay off, if you don't make money from it, and try to minimise those risks for yourself. The next of these pros and cons lists, we're going to have a look at sales. So again, this is quite easy to set up. It can be quite easy to set up a small table, for example, or a cake sale, uh, something like that. You can do it on your own. It can be good for up to about £500. So depending on the price of the things that you're selling and how many of them you're selling, uh, you can raise that kind of money uh, you know, relatively quickly. So once you've got an agreement from a venue uh, where you can set up your stall of whatever kind and you've sourced all the things that you're going to be selling there, uh, once you've cashed up at the end of the day, you've got the money straight there in front of you. It's also a really good way of turning a small amount of money, an initial investment, into a larger amount of money. So like that example with the donuts, being able to mark up the price of those quite a lot um, allows you to make money out of small, so large amounts of money out of smaller amounts of money. On the con side, you do need some money to start off or you need access to materials and time if you're making things. There's some risk. Again, if you're producing too much or if you're buying in too much stock, that's a kind of risk that you're taking on. You really also need to be careful about that choice of product. What is it that you're choosing to sell? So there might be particular things that would sell very well in particular situations. I'm thinking here about like going to a music festival and uh, somebody selling wellies when it's really rainy and wet and muddy. They're going to sell really well at those times. However, trying to sell wellies in like a city or an urban environment, it isn't going to sell so well because you don't need them so much. So think about that and do a little bit of research and think and put a bit of thought into what product you're choosing to sell. There is also the potential that there will be no buyers. So that might be um, on the footfall of where you are, how many people are passing through. It might be on how much money people have to spare in those situations. Or it may be that people are just not really that interested in what you're selling. So those are some of the cons and the risks that you need to weigh up before you start. Next, we're going to have a look at donations and the pros and cons involved in that. Again, it can be easy to set up. It can be as simple as, uh, you know, having a bucket or a tip jar, making a little sign for it and asking for donations in that way. 
You might also want to use um, like an online format, so something uh, like the, a just giving page so that people can make those payments to you and give those donations online. You can also set it up on your own, that's nice and easy. It can be good for up to about £200, so if you need that type of money to start your project, then donations might be a really good way to do that. It also allows you to tell your story and the story of your project, so you're starting to get people interested in those ideas and what you're communicating. So it can allow you to uh, kind of get the ideas out there and try them out on a wider audience. Also, it's a really good way of turning your network, the people who you know and have connections with, into money. So it's a good way uh, to appeal to people who you know and then collect in money from them. On the downsides, it does take time. So uh, your donation campaign might take place over maybe a month. There's also the part of asking for money. Loads of people are a bit kind of embarrassed or scared about this. And so it causes some people a bit of like anxiety to ask others for money. You are limited to how often you could do this successfully. So because you're relying on your network of friends and family and people you know, they will only be able to give so many times to a donation type campaign. There's also lots of competition out there. So there's loads of people all the time doing things for good causes of different types. This means that uh, anyone who's interested in giving to a good cause has loads of different calls on that money. And then the last one, and this is one that we come up against all too often, is that the people in your network, uh, the people who you're appealing to, don't really have any spare cash. So they find it too hard to actually make a donation to your campaign. In terms of crowdfunding, when we're looking at the pros, it, it allows you to get your product out there. If you're making something that needs to be distributed, say you were publishing a book or making enamel pin badges, it allows you to get those out there into the world. You're sending them out to different people who are interested. It also allows people to get involved, so the crowd is a very important part of crowdfunding. It's a good way to uh, raise over a thousand pounds. So if your project requires um, money for like a print run, say with that idea with the book publishing, you might need three thousand pounds to print all of the books that you need. And so this crowd rate, crowdfunding can be a good way of raising that type, uh, that level of money. It also allows you to tell your story, so to get your story out there, to get your ideas talked about, to see who's on board and who's interested. And it's another way of turning that network of people into money. So thinking about those networks that you're already part of and the networks of your wider stakeholders and how you could collect in small amounts of money from lots of different people. In terms of the cons, for crowdfunding, it involves lots of planning and preparation. So you're going to have to set up your campaign page, you're going to need a video, you're going to need examples of what you're producing, you're going to need a good pitch, and you're going to need to reformat that and uh, make a number of versions of that before it's ready to go. Also, the campaign itself takes time. So usually campaigns might run for three or four weeks and over that whole time you'll be working on it and promoting it and then there'll be another few weeks afterwards until you can get the payment from that. It also relies really on reaching people. So reaching people who want to get involved with your project, who like the story and who like the things that you're producing and are interested in them. And that can be a kind of time-consuming process in its own right. So a lot of that is to do with promotion. A lot of that is to do with getting that message out there and getting people to recommend your project to others. There's also quite a lot of competition. So if you look at how many Kickstarter projects or crowdfunder projects start every week, there's really a lot out there. 
And when we're thinking about, um, you know, what cash people have in their pockets and what they have their budgets, you know, to uh, donate or to buy different things from crowdfunding campaigns, that's always a squeeze. And the last of the things for crowdfunding uh, in the cons pile is that they work on an all or nothing uh, type of route. So either you reach your £3,000 goal completely or you get nothing. So anyone who's pledged to you, if you've got it up to 2900 and you don't get that last 100 then you don't get any of the money. So that's a really important thing to think about when you're thinking about crowdfunding. The very last of these pros and cons lists is to do with grants. So these are great for large projects and again looking at over a thousand pounds in terms of funding. They also give you an important seal of approval to show that your, pro your project has been uh, deemed to be really worthy of funding, of using public funds or using a grants, uh, grant or foundations specific funds to fund that. So it gives people a really good like thumbs up that this is a worthwhile project. Also, it's good in terms of uh, reaching out for those public benefits. So if your project has lots of different public benefits, you'll find it easier to work uh, towards making funding applications. And grant funding, grant fundraising, is a good way of turning your track record, the things that you've already done, into money. So it's working on uh, the assumption that because you've successfully made product, uh, projects happen in the past, that you'll be able to do that in the future. However, there are cons. Again, it takes quite a lot of time. So it takes quite a lot of planning and preparation in terms of writing your funding application. And then it can take maybe uh, six weeks to three months to hear a decision back. So it's quite an invested a period of time and you need to like really program that in when you're thinking about how your activities uh, work for your projects and when it happens. It's also quite a complex process so there's lots of different um, criteria and requirements that you need to be uh, clear about. You'll need to also secure match funding so lots of different grants bodies uh, will ask that you have secured funding from other sources as well as theirs. So it won't necessarily allow you like 100% of your project budget. Also, you'll need to set up partnerships. And this is quite a good idea with this kind of size of project because if you're working on a large project, it's great to have some larger partners involved. But it does also take time and uh, people might not always be willing to take the risk on you. Again, it's an all or nothing process. So you might write a really, really good funding application, but because there's competition for those funds, because there's uh, one or two criteria that don't necessarily tick all of the boxes for the, for the granting uh, body, then they can just say no, they can reject your application. So you've put all of that work in and it's either yes, you're successful, you get that large pot of funding, or no, not at all. So that can be a tricky thing to deal with when you're thinking about what type of fundraising you want to get involved in. Now that you've considered all of those different pros and cons, it's important to think about how you can combine those different types. So thinking about this like as a strategy, as a fundraising strategy. So how could different types of fundraising link with each other? So there might be something to do with uh, setting up an event or collecting donations that could link to each other. And think about how you could use them in different ways to, to achieve your project's aims. So if we're thinking about that book publishing idea or those enamel pin badges, maybe something like crowdfunding is the best way to do that. So that would allow you to gauge interest and see who wants these products. You work out uh, how you'll send them, how you'll distribute them to different people, and you do all of that after that point of getting the funding. So 
bringing all the people in who want the pro who want the project to happen, and then making it happen and rewarding them with those books or with those badge pins. At this point, you're going to want to think about writing a fundraising strategy. So you're going to want to work out the pros and cons and brainstorm different ideas for how you could raise money through those events, sales and donations and think about how you might combine these things. So how much money or time or network do you have access to? And work out really carefully which ideas are worth pursuing. Which are the ones that are going to pay off best for you? So now you've thought about the pros and cons, you've got a basic fundraising strategy for your project and you're choosing relevant types of fundraising. You've gone from an idea through some strategic thinking and ways to communicate that idea and thought about all of those different ways to appeal to different people to help you raise those funds. So now you could find out more about crowdfunding and applying for grants. Those are the things that we're going to be covering in the next few videos.